Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at some climate sleeping pads and coming to the conclusion, do they suck or are they good? Let's find out. Okay guys, today is the day that I'm going to be doing the climate sleeping pad video and what I'm talking about is a long awaited video. So regular viewers, you know that this video has been in the making. It's taking me time to actually get the time to do it. And for new viewers, listen up because I'm going to explain what basically what's going on here. So let me talk about what I've got on the table first of all. I've got the climate insulated static V sleeping pad here. Underneath we have the climate insulated, this is the insulated static V Lux SL. And then underneath of that sleeping pad, we have a large orange pad, which is also from climate, but that is kind of the, um, we'll talk about that in a second. So these two pads are in production. The one underneath is kind of a unicorn. It doesn't exist. And we're gonna talk about how I have it and what happened with it. So bring you guys up to speed. Let's talk about the specs of the pads. First of all, this insulated static V on the stuff sack, it claims that it is for cold weather, backpacking, tent, car, RV, side sleepers, all that good stuff. It says it has an R value of 4.4 and that's the reason for this video. So listen up, 4.4 and it's great for sleeping on your sides. It does have these nice deep V chambers and we'll talk about that in a second as well. The pad underneath of it is the insulated static V Lux SL. It again says it's for cold weather camping. It claims to have an R value of 6.5. That's a lot of R value for this pad and a lot of disappointment as well. So it's basically the same pad as this, except it's different dimensions, it's thicker, higher R value. And then the pad underneath does not exist, okay? So I've had all of these pads for well over one year and I've used them a lot. So why did I choose climate sleeping pads? Well, the reason why is because I used to have a Exped down mat five and it had an R value of 4.1 and I've been winter camping all of my life and that sleeping pad, the down mat was absolutely awesome and I loved it. The problem was I used it so much over two to two and a half years that it eventually failed and it failed in a location on the pad where patching it just wasn't holding up. So. I finally admitted defeat and I was in a jam. I needed a sleeping pad for the winter time that was affordable, that could be delivered very quickly from Amazon. And I settled on the insulated static V. Now that was mistake number one. I should not have done that. And I have a video on talking about pro level pads and uh, entry level pads. Is it worth it? Is it not? I'll link it at the end of this video if you guys are interested in that because I do talk more about this stuff. but. That was the mistake. I should not have bought the budget pad, but the thing that got me interested in it was it said R value 4.4. So long story short, basically I got this pad and I went out winter camping as I always do. And I used the same sleeping bag, the same kind of techniques, the same layers, clothing, eat before you go to bed, lots of carbs, lots of fat. I do all that stuff. If you guys are new to the channel, go through the videos you'll see how much winter camping I do and like I said regular viewers you guys know I'm out in the winter all the time so I got this sleeping pad and uh, I went out camping same location same temperatures and I didn't record anything at first until I froze absolutely froze it was a miserable night on this sleeping pad so I went home and I basically kind of admitted defeat on that trip and I kind of thought about what went wrong what happened so the next trip I went out with this pad again, I froze again the same way, absolutely froze. The pad did not deflate, it stayed inflated the entire night, but I woke up absolutely freezing, shivering and shaking uncontrollably. So the next trip that I went out, I brought a even warmer sleeping bag. So it was about minus five degrees Celsius and I was freezing. And then I went out about minus 15 degrees Celsius and I was freezing and that was in a minus 20 degree sleeping bag. So the next time I went out, I brought a minus 25 degree sleeping bag and I froze again. I could feel the cold. 
Now here's the kicker. I brought this sleeping pad inside of a hot tent. So if you guys know the channel, I go hot tenting a lot. And I had this sleeping pad inside of the hot tent and it was roasting in there. I was in a t-shirt. It was about minus 15 to minus 18 outside. The inside temperature was above 30 degrees Celsius. And I could feel the cold coming through the bottom of this sleeping pad. So let's talk about the next sleeping pad. This is the Climate SL. What did I say it was? The V Static V Lux SL. R value claimed at 6.5. I got this pad because that pad was cold. So I ended up saying, you know what? I'm going to get a warmer pad. So I originally contacted Climate and I let them know my difficulties that I was having. I was cold. The pad said it was 4.4 R value. I was coming from a 4.1 R value pad. Didn't know what was going on. And they explained to me that these V chambers accept your down sleeping bag to loft in between these valleys. So the pad is constructed of peaks and valleys. The problem that I had with that is the peaks are very thick and they are quite warm, but the valleys are very, very deep. And then it's a welded construction. So you guys can see that. At the bottom of the pad, it is literally one millimeter thick and it's quite a large portion all the way down the pad. It's one millimeter, just welded material, no insulation. So that has an R value of zero. Now, for those of you who know down sleeping bags and under quilts and top quilts, there is sewn through construction and then there is baffled or boxed construction, which is the same thing. Essentially having a baffled construction means your outer shells here, your inner shell, there's a piece of fabric sewn in to create that 3D effect that the air can still travel through, but the feathers are trapped, giving you a very, very thick, uniform kind of thickness through the whole quilt or sleeping bag, which keeps you very warm. A sewn through construction, basically you have a baffle and a baffle and they meet. So right where my fingers are, that would be right here would be zero R value. And then you go into the baffle, warm, warm. And then again, it comes down to zero R value. So that's a sewn through construction. That is essentially what they've got here. So they have basically a sewn through kind of pad, except they didn't sew it, they welded it. So in the peaks, very warm, there is insulation, but down in the valleys, there are no insulation. Now, like I said, they claim that your down sleeping bag will loft and go into that chamber therefore reducing the weight of the sleeping pad because you're going to utilize your sleeping bag to fill those chambers. Well, it doesn't exactly work. So it sounds good on paper. It doesn't really work in real life because when you're in your sleeping bag, your body is on the pad. The fabric is actually pulled tight. So it doesn't really allow for all the expansion to go down into the chamber. And even if it does happen to make it down into the chamber, the slightest movement opens up that entire chamber and the cold air rushes in from above. So keep in mind that these chambers run all the way down the pad, meaning if your body is centrally located, the air can still come in from the side of the chamber and go underneath of you. Well, that is kind of the same thing as unzipping your sleeping bag. As soon as you move, you're gonna create a draft or unzipping your jacket, for example. As soon as I move, I'm creating a puff of air. Now my hot air is gone and I can feel the cold air already. So. That is basically what happens here. So when you're laying down on your, your sleeping pad and let's say your sleeping bag does loft into all these chambers and you move slightly, now all of that air is gone. And then you start the repetitive motion of trying to move and get warm. So that's the problem I had. Now this is an R value 6.5 is what they claim. And let's talk about R value and how it's actually found. Okay, so there are other videos on the internet explaining this and I'm not going to dive into it because it's not the purpose of this particular video, but our value in a sleeping pad, the, the standardized method has changed over time, but basically they take a steel plate at a certain temperature and they put the sleeping pad in between and then another steel plate on top at a different temperature and they sandwich the pad. So. Basically, you've got a top plate and a bottom plate on top of this pad, and then they let it run for a certain amount of time, seeing how much energy is required to basically keep the, the temperatures where they are. And that'll kind of tell you how much heat loss is going through the pad, how much energy is used to maintain that 
kind of our value thing. But like I said, I may do a video on that explaining it in greater detail and the actual scientific facts behind it. But that is how they depict our value. The important part that I want you to take from that is they put a steel plate, which is flat, underneath. They then put the sleeping pad in. They then put another steel pad or plate on top. They sandwich it. Well, let's look at the design of this pad because we have peaks and we have valleys. So when the plate is on top, it is not touching the valley. It's only touching the peak. So realistically, the only part that is actually touching those plates is the raised peaks. It's not actually the valley. The valley, we, we it's not even really an argument to say that the valley has zero R value because it's literally just, there's nothing there. It's a millimeter, it's welded. So there is zero R value there. So my question is how are they getting a huge number of R value 6.5 on a pad that has massive zero R value chambers, okay? There is no sleeping bag used for that test, it's just the pad. So they're claiming that your sleeping bag fills this in and that gives you the R value rating and it's gonna be warm. Well, I don't really believe that and I don't believe that because I have a trusty, well-known Thermarest cell, closed cell pad here, sorry, that is foil. We all know this, this is the Thermarest Ridge Rest Pad. It has an R value of 2.8. It is closed cell foam and that is all it is. It has reflective kind of foil on top. It has these similar type of chambers. However, they're only little, little. And on the other side is the other valley. So it's not a valley valley. It's actually a valley going into a peak. So it's still, it's still thick. Okay, so it doesn't go down to one millimeter. This actually stays, I wanna say, probably about a centimeter thick, even on the low spots of those valleys. It, it basically pushes out to the peak on the other side. So one centimeter thick, about, and this has an R value of 2.8. That's really, really good for a closed cell pad of this thickness. The other climate pad, the one I just threw on the ground a few minutes ago, that's saying that that has an R value of 4.4 and it is about that thick and this is one centimeter thick. I would expect the, the climate pad to actually have an R value of about six, to be honest, when we're comparing it with this. But this comparison is kind of invalid because this is closed cell and that's a different insulation. So we can argue that, but I have a problem with the R value of these pads, like I was saying, because they actually contacted me with many emails saying this pad is much warmer um, than the other pad. This is more winter rated. However, both stuff sacks say that they're winter rated and they're good for snow. So I actually asked Climate, I said, would you be willing to send me this sleeping pad and allow me to try it? It'll be on my channel. There's a little bit of free advertising there. And, um, and they ended up saying, no, we're not interested. And, and what they did is they, they basically blamed it on my sleeping bag over and over and over again. We exchanged emails back and forth for days and days and days. And they kept blaming what I ate, what I wore, my sleeping bag. And I explained to them, I've been doing this all my life. I go winter camping all the time. And I've never been cold the way I am cold on these sleeping pads. So I actually ended up purchasing this pad as well as the other insulated Static V because this was an R value 6.5 and I was thinking I'm going to be a lot warmer. Well, I was really, really, really upset. So let's talk about the other Static V was about $100. This was about $180 to $200. So just, just round it and say we're at $300 Canadian in the two sleeping pads that I purchased. I froze on this again and I was not happy after all that money I spent I was not happy so I basically had to use it for the remainder of that year because I didn't have much money left and I kind of kicked myself in the butt because not only did I buy two horrible pads for winter but I also spent the money that I could have bought the high-end pad if I didn't dabble in these pads in the first place so let's get that out of the way that brings us to this sleeping pad. What is it? So this is a climate pad. You'll notice there is no branding on it at all, top or bottom. And they always put the branding up at the head end by the valves. And that is exactly where we got the valve. So this was sent to me from climate after probably about a week when I said, I'm not gonna use them anymore. They emailed me back and they said, hey, we're not gonna send you the Lux SL that you asked for, but instead 
we're wondering if you would like to test our new pad that's going to be coming out being this pad and i said sure so they sent it to me i got it and when it's deflated there is noticeably more insulation in this pad than there is in the sl it's a very large pad there is no r value rating they won't tell me what the r value is they just said that it's a new insulation try it you might be warmer i wasn't warm okay so th this is a, an ongoing problem this is a massive sleeping pad i mean it is gigantic i want to say it's about three inches thick but again we have the zero r value welded seams down here in the chambers which is kind of their design of saying your down is going to fill that chamber giving you warmth therefore having a lighter weight sleeping pad utilizing your sleeping bag as under insulation as well as top insulation which is a good idea but it just doesn't work it looks good on paper i don't find it works at all so going back to the r value those plates those plates are only in contact with the peaks they're not in contact with the valleys so you're actually only getting a reading of what is here meanwhile they've removed all of the pad making it lighter and introducing a cavity for your sleeping bag but i just i don't find it works so what i did is i took this sleeping pad out with this sleeping pad and i was toasty warm the entire night so i said okay let's minimize something so let's take this pad out and let's bring the lux sl so i did that with this i was warm and then I said, okay, let's take away the pad again and try the original orange static V that I purchased, the insulated one, with this. And I was warm all night long. So this is an R value of 2.8 and the static V insulated is 4.4 and I was warm all night. So winter ended and I, I still wasn't happy. I wasn't satisfied and it is now over a year and a half and they have still yet to contact me about this pad and I still haven't seen it for sale. So the only thing I can think of is they sent this to me just to shut me up. And that's the reason why there's no climate on it is because they don't want to be associated with it. So that, that's my thought anyways. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Um, I did purchase both pads, the SL and the Static V. This one was sent to me compliments, uh, I believe, to just kind of zip my mouth and just here here's a pad use it and be happy with it but i'd be interested in what you guys think about that let's talk about what i did to fix the problem okay so now that i've gone through kind of the a bit of the backstory and i know some of it's a little bit boring but it was important for me to reach out to them to kind of see what was going on and i even asked all my friends that had the same pad because this was recommended to me the static v insulated from a lot of friends and i said yeah you know what for the price i'll grab it and use it for the season and hopefully it works um, and in all the exchange emails not once did climate take any kind of fault for yeah maybe it is a little bit warmer or colder maybe we do need to look into what's going on here and maybe work with you a little bit more all they kept saying was it's your sleeping bag it's your food it's your clothing it's you're doing something wrong well no, I'm not. I've been doing this all my life and I know how to stay warm. I know how to stay cold. <laughs> and these pads are absolutely cold in the winter time. I don't believe the R value to be true. I believe the R value may only be taken from the peaks and not the valleys because we cannot argue that this material right here, this seam is zero R value. It is one millimeter thick. It's welded. There's no insulation there. So it has to be zero R value, maybe 0.01. There's no R value there. And with the valleys, all of these valleys in here, that must be, that must take up a good 25 to 30% of the pad. And you're, you're basically, they're saying that the entire pad is an R value of 4.4 when it's really not because there are massive spots on the pad that are zero R value. They're welded construction. So I would, I would assume that these are zero R value. I mean, I can't see any value being taken off of that i don't know the actual number it might be 0 0.1 0 0.2 i don't know but it is not 4.4 here versus here that's that's not happening so what i did personally is i i spent the money on this pad i spent the money on the other pad and i eventually a year later went and got a thermarest neoware x therm sleeping pad absolutely warm now here's the thing with that pad that pad is an r value of 6.9 it does not have any valleys like this v construction the thermarest pad is flat and uniform 
R value of 6.9. Now they say this pad is an R value of 6.5. I freeze on this pad, absolutely freeze. On my Thermarest, I can immediately feel the heat within 60 seconds radiating through my back for the entire night. So two things going on here. The valleys are not working. I'm very, very cold and the R value is not being measured for the entire pad. It's only being measured on the peaks, okay? The sleeping bag going into the valley, that's a gimmick. That's not really happening. If it does, it's not equating to an R value of 4.4. No way, I don't believe it. So I have done a lot of research and I've asked a lot of people over the last year what they think about their climate pads. And they've actually been 50-50. They've said, yes, I'm warm, no, I freeze. So. It was kind of inconclusive to be completely honest. 50% of the people are saying it's good and 50% are saying it's bad, but I'm gonna give you my good take on it. So what do I think about them? I think they are excellent quality pads. They are built very well, which is why I still have them. So this particular pad has been with me for well over a year. It has been used and abused on the beach, on rocks, on sticks. It is still going strong. It works really well. I like the valve system, the little butterfly valve, the in and out that works really well. It packs down very small. It is fairly lightweight. It does the job. It keeps me comfortable in the summer, not in the winter. So I will not use these in the winter or cold weather because I freeze every single time. And the whole point about having a small sleeping pad and a lightweight pad is to stay lightweight. So if I have to bring a secondary pad to put on or under this, it defeats the purpose. What's the point? Because now I'm buying this pad plus I'm buying another pad to stay warm when I could just go and buy the Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm and be absolutely warm all night long, way below temperatures beyond what these are supposed to do. So this one, R value 4.4, I don't believe it. I would probably say it's more of an R value of three if I were to guess. And the R value on this guy, 6.5, I would say that's probably more like 4.3 to maybe 4.5. That's my personal take. I would definitely love to hear what you guys think. And absolutely, what do you guys think? If, if Have you guys used these? Are you warm? Are you cold? Are you comfortable? What do you guys think? Drop it down in the comment section because I'm dying to hear what you guys have to say because my personal experience on these has been terrible in cold weather. But like I said, summertime, I don't think I'll ever get rid of this guy because it packs really small and it's comfortable and it's a budget pad. So if I do happen to pop a hole in this pad, I could replace it versus punching a hole in my Thermarest, which is a $300 pad. I'm not gonna be too happy replacing that. So I save that for my cold weather and I use this for my warm weather. As for the other two pads, I'm gonna be selling those. So the SL and the pad underneath of it, which has no name, it doesn't even exist as far as I know, uh, these two I am gonna be selling and I, I'm not gonna keep them because I don't need them. This is very, very uncomfortable. It's like on a water bed. You're always moving around. Oh, it's too thick. You just, you bump around, it's not comfortable. This guy is thin enough that it doesn't bounce around, but it's thick enough to keep you elevated and keep your body parts, your shoulders and hips off the ground when fully inflated. Uh, but like I said, it's not good in cold weather. It, it just, I personally, I freeze. So here I've got my cell phone with my flashlight on. I just want to demonstrate the zero R value spots or at least the welded spots that I'm talking about. I'm going to run the light down on the other side and you guys can see for yourself. So you can clearly see the light coming through on those very, very cold spots. Okay, so there you have it. I finally did it. I've been putting this video off for a very long time because I hate making videos like this. I don't like it. Generally, when I receive a product that I don't like, I never show it. This was a little bit different because I purchased these products and I wasn't happy with them. And I reached out to them to try and fix the problem. And they basically sent me a pad just to kind of shut me up. That's, that's how I took it. And I'm still not happy with it. So. Like I said, climate pads, summer, I'm not using them in winter time, but uh, this was a viewer requested video. And like I told that viewer and many other viewers that I would make the video, even though I'm not really happy doing it because I don't like griping about stuff like this. Honestly, I, I'm gonna get rid of them. I'm gonna sell them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep them other than this guy because it does serve a purpose for summertime. But uh, I, I hope this was useful and I finally got around to making the video. So 
I'm interested to see if Climate does reach out to me again because they have yet to reach out to me. It has been over a year and I haven't heard anything at all. So I'm interested to see if they kind of catch wind of this video. Maybe they have some kind of answer. If they do have some kind of answer, I'll probably post an update on my community page. Unless it's a really big update, then I'll make a separate video of it. But as of now, I'm going to say that the R value for the static pads sucks and all the climate pads the r value is garbage i don't trust it but like i said that's my personal opinion i don't believe it to be true now i will say that they are so it does say this one's made in taiwan it does say this one is made in china and the other one doesn't have any information on it at all um, but the stuff sack does say it says designed in usa uh, made in china so I don't know, I'm, I'm interested to, to maybe find out which factory that these are made in and kind of go through some of the manufacturing process and do a little bit more research to find out if I could find anything kind of lingering that uh, might support me being correct in the R value not being right. But that is all I got for today. I hate making videos like this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was helpful. I'll be in the comment section checking to see what you guys say. And uh, that's my... That's my two cents. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.